So hi everybody, welcome back to Law Hero. My name is Jen and we look at all things law related. So today we're going to talk about questions you might be asked in an interview and questions you are to ask in an interview. I have already done numerous videos about your approach to interviews, your preparation, all that sort of stuff, um, making CVs and all of that. But today we're focusing specifically on the type of questions you need to prepare yourself to answer. And this is quite frankly where most people fall down. You can have a really great candidate. They've just never ever considered these types of questions before and they're totally lost when they're asked them. There's sometimes questions around behavior and to see kind of what your what your own integrity is because a lot of the time law is to do with um you know when you're on a job if you make a mistake how quickly you own up um you know that you don't try and cover up mistakes that you are you know honest in your dealings that kind of thing is very important for this type of a role so yeah without further ado we're going to get into it if you haven't already please follow along on instagram and subscribe before we talk about the questions the first thing we need to do is to know and prepare around the job spec and I mean if you're a trainee solicitor this will be set out um, in the website and they'll they'll have certain buzzwords of what they're looking for type of people like you know if they're looking for ambitious people if they're looking for conscientious people you have to prove in your interview that you have all of these uh, traits so the first thing to do is know the job spec for wh whomever you're interviewing to uh, off by heart and the second thing to do then is know the company you're applying to thoroughly i cannot tell you how many times i have caught trainees out especially when they uh, use cover letters um for numerous firms at once because they're trying to kill a number of birds with the one stone my advice to you is know a certain amount of firms and i would say max max four extremely extremely well and you will have a far better chance of getting a traineeship with them if you don't know them well if you don't know their uh, principles well you're going to really suffer in the questions because when they ask you questions like what do you know about our business you're going to be screwed if you only have surface knowledge it's going to be obvious you're not prepared and they're not going to want to it's hire important you important to note that this video is solely aimed at trainee solicitors for young lawyers and for people who are going from private practice to in-house um, the interview will take a very different type of role um, it'll be more competency based because obviously you're qualified at that stage and the real value is in what you know and what you can do Whereas when you're a trainee solicitor, the understanding is that you don't really have a lot of legal experience and the interview is more based around your savviness as in your ability to prepare for the interview and how much you know about the company and your, your commercial awareness essentially and also um, your character and your behaviour, the way you speak your honesty, how you answer questions, they're all assessing your character. So it'll more than likely open with, tell me about yourself. Please don't say my name is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, don't do that. A good answer would be, I'm a graduate of whatever, NUIG, I did a master's in blah, blah, blah. I have some legal experience in some solicitor firms and right now I'm a paralegal in X. Then stop, that's how you would answer that then they so that's just basically a, like an, an opening question and they might then go and say well how you describe yourself and you say well i am extremely interested in law i am i really enjoy my work as a paralegal i very much like sport outside of work you know that kind of thing it's very short answers you're not like uh how would i describe myself i'm a really interesting person so the problem with saying you're a really interesting person is you're telling not showing the best thing is just to be very factual and you see if you've prepared this it'll just flow but if you haven't thought about this beforehand you're gonna say some stupid stuff okay okay so you know when you're saying you describe yourself if you've read the damn um, job description you will say 
you know, and if, if, if you know that the qualities they're looking for is someone who's conscientious, organized, ambitious, you drop in little hints there like, uh, outside of work, I'm quite competitive, I play on a team, I, um, I'm very concerned about the environment, I, um, I volunteer in St. Vincent de Paul or whatever, you know, those examples demonstrate your qualities without you saying anything. So when I when I get uh, CVs and cover letters from people saying, I'm a hardworking, diligent person, I'm like, aren't we all? You know, like, don't, don't say that about yourself. Don't. Why do you want to work here? Ooh, that's an important question. That's basically asking you why here as opposed to Johnny down the road. Like, why don't you want to work at that law firm? Why do you want to work here? And you need to have a damn good answer. And the best place is the company website. And that will give you, you know, you're, you're, you're persuading them that you're the right person for the job and that you've thought about, okay, if I were to work here, would I fit into the culture? There's no point you going on and on about, um, Let's say for example you know you're really ambitious and you're commercially minded and then you go into like you know a criminal uh criminal justice law firm like that's not gonna suit your personality or what you want out of life you have to align your wants with what they have otherwise they're never gonna choose you because you're out of alignment what motivates you i mean this is a real kind of self-awareness question that you know or that you you aren't just doing something because other people are telling you to do it that's extrinsic motivation the they're looking same with what are you passionate about um that look they'll kind of be able to tell you know from what you're passionate about will you be a good fit i mean and like you can really say anything there and i always tell trainees be interesting when they ask you that kind of broad question like if you're into making pottery just tell them and they'll remember you as the pottery girl or if you're a horse rider they'll remember you as the horse rider person or the cello person you know be honest be very very honest and even if you think it's weird it doesn't matter it's up to them like most law firms like quirky people because most law firms have quirky clients so don't worry about that then there'll be kind of like hr questions i call them like what are your strengths what are your weaknesses and Yes, they are to catch you out and um, be under no illusions. Um, when they ask you about your strengths, that's really looking for your soft skills. So are you able to, you know, handle people, good communicator, you know, diplomatic? Are you able to, um, are you able to speak if you're asked to? Are you able to project manage? Are you able to, you know, are you easy to get on with? That kind of thing. And then your weaknesses, I mean, I always feel like um, it's you can you can try and spin a weakness into something positive. So I always say, for, for, I'll tell you guys what I always say for me, and it's it's the truth. Um, I overthink things sometimes, and then other times I can overlook small details. They're they're my weaknesses, and but you see if you are aware of them then you can fix them and that's what they're looking for they're looking for self-awareness if you went oh i have no weaknesses like you're gonna look like a fool okay what are your goals for the future that's again they're trying to prod and see have you really thought about the job so if you say oh yeah i think i'd like to eventually uh, become a pilot they'll be like okay this person is only being a trainee solicitor in the meantime and that's not the kind of person we want so you know obviously you want to have to say you want to have a very successful <laughs> successful career in law you don't have to say you want to be a partner but you know just say like law is where you want to be hopefully for the long term okay they might ask you about a difficult situation and how you got over it um you know again this is about your character how you deal with conflict um and really really do think of a good example for this uh, I always I always use a real life example of what happened to me was, you know, if there was a misunderstanding at work, if you, for example, you didn't know a deadline, you know, you just weren't informed or you hadn't gone about it. And, you know, what it what they're looking to do is to see, do you cover up mistakes or are you honest and upfront about your feelings? It's it's all about kind of being in touch with re reality. Um, the same with how do you handle stress? 
what is your greatest accomplishment? I mean, obviously for you guys, um, and uh, for everyone really, I mean, more than likely that'll be something outside of the workplace, um, but it could be something in the workplace too, it, it depends. Um, how do you define success? Again, they're looking to see what kind of person you are. Are you very driven or are you very easygoing? You know, if you're a bit too easygoing, that might not fit into the corporate law environment. They are looking for competitive people a lot of the time, but not always. Like if you have a whole law firm of competitive people, that's gonna be very toxic as well. So they're looking for a balance of people, um, but they do want people, you know, who are motivated. That's the most important thing. You. You don't want to have a big group of people that you constantly need to, you know, um, goad them into doing things. You, you want them to be happy to be there and have a good attitude. Again, with performing under pressure, they might say to you, how do you perform under pressure? Uh, most people will have a very honest answer for this. You know, they'll say things like, I love performing under pressure. I perform my best under pressure, for example, or oh, I prefer things to be more relaxed and very proactive. I like to be very organized. You know, there's lots of ways of getting around that question. Now we come to the kind of law specific, you know, the, the questions they'll ask to see what is your awareness around the law. And like, they're not going to ask you, like, can you define a tort for me? Or you know, what is the legal test for defining negligence? They're not going to, they're not going to ask anything like that, but they will ask some questions just to see, you know, where you're at. Um, so I have some here, like what, what are the challenges facing the legal industry? If you guys watch my videos, you'll be fine about that. Um, and these are kind of quasi commercial awareness as well, because never, never forget that law is a business. You know, it, it is a business for what well, legal services is a business um, for these law firms. They, they need to make money and they need for you to understand how to make money uh, in them. They might say, how do you think COVID-19 has affected our business? And you need to have a little answer for that. And you know, you they might say, What do you think are the attributes of a successful commercial lawyer? Um again, if you have listened to all my videos, you will be able to answer that. Um, what differentiates us from our competitors? You know, what is our competitive advantage? What are we known for? And again, if you've done your research, you'll be fine with that kind of thing. Um Give an example of a recent court decision and whether you agree or disagree. That would be quite niche and it would be kind of crap if you were asked that and you didn't have an answer. To be honest, I wouldn't have an answer around that. A recent court case, the one that comes to my mind is John and Gemma um, and I agree that the judicial review was refused. So that's all I would. Now we come to the best bit of this. When they say at the very end, is there anything else you would like to say or anything you would like to ask us? Oh my God, you guys really, really need to capitalize on this opportunity, okay? If they say, so, so you say yes. Yes, I have something to say. Because <laughs> I like to talk a lot and, you know, but no, do you know what I mean? Don't lose this. So when they say that, you say, I just want to say thank you very much for interviewing me. I really enjoyed it. I am very, very passionate. I'm very, very willing. And I really want this opportunity. You know, you if you feel like you haven't really delivered that message or that message hasn't landed in their minds throughout the interview, there's no, I think, I think there's no problem saying, I don't think it's sleazy. I don't think, I, if it's genuine, if you're honest, if you really, really want that job, I think you should tell them. A lot of people don't say that. And if you don't ask, you won't get. And then you make sure you ask them questions. Like, this is so, so important. And people always miss this and underestimate the importance of asking a question. A good one for trainee solicitors, I think, is what does your day-to-day -day look like? You know, if you're asking a partner, if it's a partner who's interviewing you, what does your day-to-day -day look like? They love that. They love talking about themselves and they love kind of, you know, impressing upon you what they do day-to-day. -day. That's a really good one. Um, what are the biggest challenges in this role? I think that'd be really kind of self-awareness, uh, self-aware question to ask because, you know, you're invested in understanding what genuinely are the challenges to being a trainee solicitor. I have imparted some knowledge on you. All of this stuff I, you know, I do myself. I tell other people to do and best of luck with your trainee uh, interview and 
make sure you prepare your answers and make sure you have questions for those two. See you in the next one.